Welcome to The Healthy Mind. I'm Dr. Stephen Resnick, and in this episode, we're going to talk about something I believe is the most important and overlooked conversations, which we need to have right now. Our brains are changing. Our brains are being reshaped. Remember, neuroplasticity is a dynamic brain. It's not static, so we're shaping our brains. But we're being shaped by our environment our habits, devices, and what it means for our emotional health, our relationships, and our sense of purpose. We're living in a new world. And I'm not saying that lightly. After COVID, everything has shifted. It's not just our external world. It's how we work, how we socialize, how we connect, but also something deeper, something internal. Our minds, our nervous system, our entire mental operating system. Let me give you some neuroscience and some important articles with functional MRIs that I want to talk about very quickly. Number one, what's the problem going on right now? Well, the brain changes because of this dopamine response. We're going to talk about this dopaminergic reward system because through this habit loop and the use of dopamine, the way our brains are adapting, how we're going to take a look and see what the problem and what we need to do to fix it because we need to be aware of it. Number two, self-regulation and the prefrontal cortex. What the attention span, how dopamine not only affects the, the craving and the dopamine loop, but the prefrontal cortex. So compulsive scrolling and also the reduced activity in the attention of the brain and the effect of this, what we call the salience network is a very big part of this problem. And number three, mental health correlations. We're seeing more volumes of anxiety, depression, a lot of conditions that are associated with social media. The last one is sleep. We're seeing sleep being affected by the social media. And what happens? That's our last, our fourth pillar. And that's what affects our physical body and longevity. So we're going to really dive into what social media has done to the adolescent generation and how it's affecting our generation and how as parents or family members or role models, how we can help the adolescents and the children understand their role in social media and how to allow their minds and brains to function appropriately and evolve accordingly. We were already heading towards constant digital engagement, but the pandemic put that on overdrive. And now we're here in a world where silence feels uncomfortable. Boredom is avoided at all costs, and almost everything you see is staring at a screen. Just take a moment, take a moment and pause, and took, take a look around you, around the coffee shop, in the elevator, walking on the street, the screen is in front of our face. We don't sit in stillness anymore. We scroll, we check, we consume. Phones have become more than tools. They become our safety nets, our companion, our emotional regulators. They offer information, distraction, validation, all in the palm of your hand. And for a brain that's evolved for survival, this is information, this is brain overload. Let's pause and remember something important. Our brains are ancient, remember. They're designed for hunter-gathering experiences expenditure of energy, movement, storytelling, face-to-face -face interaction, problem solving, not 10 hours of screen time and swiping through social interactions. And that brings us to an important point, which I hear almost every single day. I hear the same question. Why are kids these days so different? And here's the truth. Living in today's society is harder than it was growing up. We didn't grow up with these constant dopamine loops. We didn't have an algorithm shaped on self-worth or as phones as our 24 seven pacifier. And that's something we need to understand. We can't judge our adolescents, our kids. We can't judge them. We can't blame the kids because they're growing up in a world that we handed them. The cell phone is there. Social media is there. We're not going to change that. What we need to do and our job is to adapt, to guide them, to teach them emotional regulation, not just behavior correction. As parents, as role models, as leaders, we need to focus on control and more connection because connection, real face-to-face, -face, oxytocin releasing connection is how you can co-regulate a child's nervous system. When we talk about social media and information overload, I want to talk about what I talked about a little earlier about this hyper stimulation dopamine pathways. And what we're doing is we're encouraging this attention fragmentation. We're over activating this brain's salience network, what the brain deems important, we're moving it towards impulsivity and decreasing attention. 
We're overloading working memory. So this is what we call cognitive overload. We're reducing mental clarity and depth of thinking. We're suppressing that brain's default mode network, that area where causes deep reflection, our inner narrator, our creative thought, our emotional integration. We're exhausting that prefrontal cortex. We're reducing executive function capacity. We're causing impulsivity and difficulty in maintaining sustained attention. And what's constantly reinforcing that stimulation? Social media. What does social media do? It hijacks the brain's reward circuits. Every like, every comment, every share, what does it do? It releases dopamine, a burst of temporary pleasure. But here's the mechanism. Dopamine, remember, is a motivation molecule. It's not just a pleasure one. It's designed for you to drive towards reward, not to give you contentment. So with every scroll, your brain anticipates what? More reward, but the satisfaction never lasts. You're left chasing, you're left wanting, you're hooked on novelty, you're addicted to intermittent reinforcement like a slot machine. This is the wiring of the brain. This affects what we call the mesolimbic pathway, that same dopamine circuitry involved in the habit loops and addiction. It trains your brain to associate validation with what? Screens, not with self-awareness, not with real connection, not with effort. This is where I talk about, and you're gonna hear in a lot of my videos, the habit loop. And I'm gonna show you how the habit loop works in social media and devices, because then you could understand how our brains work. Because when something's automated and it's in your subconscious brain, because the brain wants to wire itself for efficiency, it wants to run on subconscious program, and the way it does it is through habit loops. So if you understand your habit loop and you understand how your brain is working, then you can use your mind, your author, to get you out of brainful into mindful. So how does the habit loop work? Remember, cue, routine, reward. Remember, cue is the trigger. It's the stimulus. It's the triggering, prompting behavior. So let's say, I'll give an example, boredom or a notification alert or feeling anxious or feeling lonely. That's gonna be the cue. What's the routine, the action, the behavior? It's the habitual behavior itself. Checking the phone, scrolling Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all the social media platforms, unaware of it, just scrolling, because a lot of times you're unaware of it. Remember, you gotta turn on that phone and start scrolling. Your brain does it automatically. And what's the reward? The outcome is reinforced by the behavior, receiving the like, comments, reducing the anxiety, escaping boredom. So every reward releases dopamine. It reinforces the association between cue and routine, making what? The habit stronger, and increasing that automatic response. So let me give you an exact example so you understand these habit loops. Habit loop, example number one, positive reinforcement. So pleasure or feeling good or getting some type of positive reinforcement. So here we go. What's the cue? An adolescent posting a selfie. What's the routine? Frequently checking the notification to see how many likes and comments they received. What's the reward? Receiving social validation, likes, comments causing what a dopamine spike remember the craving is driven by dopamine what's the result each like or comment reinforces craving more validation strengthening future posting behavior so let's talk about that neurological mechanism each notification creates anticipation it creates triggering dopamine release in that area of the brain called the ventral striatum so the adolescent begins craving the reward Condition them to regularly post, regularly scroll, and what? Seek digital validation. Now I'm gonna give you habit loop number two example. Negative reinforcement. So avoiding, avoiding discomfort. What's the cue? An adolescent feels bored, he feels anxious, socially awkward, or feels lonely. Routine, immediately open social media and start scrolling mindlessly. Reward. The negative emotion disappears, it escapes, it's distracted, it's put on the side, causing a relief-driven dopamine release. What's the result? Adolescent associated social media with emotional escape, leading them to habitually turn on the phones during uncomfortable and emotional states. What's the neurological mechanism, which I just pointed out? Dopamine does not only cause pleasure-seeking behaviors, but it also reinforces behaviors to avoid agitation, that discomfort, that anxiety, this creates a powerful negative reinforcement loop. 
using social media as a coping strategy or mechanism. So this is where a habit becomes also maladaptive. Let me give you more habit loop examples. FOMO, fear of missing out. What's the cue? See friends posting about an event online. What's the routine? Immediately check your notifications and start posting to feel included. What's the reward? Temporary relief from anxiety of missing out. So that dopamine release reinforces the cycle. Another one, social comparison and competition. Q, noticing someone's follower count or popularity growing. What's the routine? Engaging more heavy online, more posting, trying to gain more followers, more acceptance. Reward, increasing likes and attention temporarily relieves feelings of what? Inadequacy, reinforcing the craving. Notification and alerts. So having that phone and having something that's on a social media platform that notifies and alerts. What's the cue? The phone buzzing or dinging. Routine, instantly checking social media notifications. And what's that reward? A dopamine driven sense of anticipation or excitement from that novelty or that new activity. So those are examples of the reward loop. This is how social media affects our brains and it uses our circuitry in its favor. Being aware of it and mapping out the cue, mapping out that routine behavior or that action, and then mapping out the reward can help you understand how your brain is working. Because once you start doing that, you're going to catch it mindfully and you're going to stop it as a track and with repetition, you can actually change it.